Producer, the person who oversees the business details of a theatrical production. Design team, those who design and coordinate a production set, props, lighting, sound, costumes, and makeup. Artistic director, the person who hires the director, designers, and cast. Assistant director, the person who assists the director by organizing the rehearsal process, coordinating rehearsal schedules, working with individual actors, and taking the director's notes. Costume designer, the person who designs costumes to build or choose costumes to rent, borrow, or buy for a production. Fight director, a directing specialist who choreographs both armed and unarmed fight scenes and stunts on stage. Lighting designer. Person who develops a lighting concept and design for a production. The lighting designers oversees installation and operation of lighting for the production. Music director. Person who shapes musical tone of the production. Set designer. The person who develops the concept for and designs a set. Sound designer. Person who determines the kinds of sounds needed for a production. Comedy, a light and amusing play that typically has a happy ending. Comedy of manners, genre of play popular in England in the early 1600s characterized by rebel wit and fashionable characters and dealing with vices and follies of the upper class. Domestic tragedy, form of British theatre popular in early 1700s that showed the destruction of a good person who yields to temptation. Kabuki. Traditional form of Japanese theater from early 1600s that combined stylized acting, elaborate costumes, and musical accompaniment. Melodrama. Dramatic form from 1800 characterized by cliff-hanging plots, heart-tugging emotional appeals, the celebration of virtue, and a strongly moralistic tone. Miracle Play. One of the principal types of medieval European drama, a miracle play told the lives of saints and martyrs. Morality play. One of the principal types of medieval European drama, a morality play presented personified virtues and vices in dramas depicting the moral struggle of the soul. Mystery play. One of the principal types of medieval European drama that depicted episodes from the Bible. Peking Opera. A tradition established by acting companies in the Chinese capital in the 1800s characterized by an emphasis on the actors' performances, minimal sets and props, elaborate costumes, and stylized movements and songs. Rasa In Indian drama, a classification of plays according to a dominant mood, such as comic, pathetic, or heroic. Situation Comedies Recurring TV programs, usually weekly, that explore comic situations with the same basic cast of characters. Sturm und Drang. Literally storm in stress, a German romantic movement of the late 1700s that rejected the tight structure of neoclassicism and embraced the less constrictive dramatic form of William Shakespeare. Theater of Cruelty. A form of theater employing non-verbal communication developed by the French avant-garde playwright, actor, and director Adnan Artaud in the 1920s and 30s. Tragedy. A form of drama in which the main character suffers disaster. Well-made plays. Plays that featured formulaic, often melodramatic, studies of middle-class domestic life. Plays with a traditional plot structure. Theme. The underlying meaning of a literary work. Symbol. A concrete image used to represent an abstract concept or idea. Speaker. Converts the signal received from the amplifier from electrical to mechanical energy, which can be heard. Protagonist. The main character of a play and the character with which the audience identifies most strongly. Prologue. An introduction to a play may be in the form of a monologue by a major character or a commentary by a chorus. Monologue, a story, speech, or scene performed by one actor alone. Genre, classification by type, a distinct classification of literature. Foil, a character whose personality and physical appearance contrast with those of the protagonist. Farce. 
comedy with exaggerated characterizations, abundant physical or visual humor, and often an improbable plot. Exposition, the beginning part of a plot that provides important background information. Drama, a play, film, or TV program dealing with a serious subject matter but that does not necessarily have a disastrous ending. Diction, language, or meaning expressed in words, one of the six elements of tragedy set forth by Aristotle. Dialect, language features peculiar to the speech of a particular region. Denouement, the final resolution of the conflict in a plot. Chorus, a group of actors reciting dialogue or singing in unison, often accompanied by synchronized movement. In Greek theater they functioned as a commentary on an accompaniment to the action of a play. Blank verse, unrhymed poetry in which each line has five accented syllables, the verse pattern in which Shakespeare wrote many of his plays. Aside. A statement by an actor spoken half to him or herself and half to the audience. Antagonist. A person, situation, or the protagonist's own inner conflict that is in opposition to the protectionist's goals. Gel. A thin piece of colored plastic available in a wide array of colors that can be cut and fitted to a light to color the beam directed onto the stage. Gobo. A think metal template with a pattern punched out attached to a lighting instrument to create patterned or textured lighting effects. Pantomime Diaphragmatic breathing Makes full use of the power of your diaphragm in the breathing process. It increases your air capacity and improves your breath control. Such control is vital for exhaling slowly and steadily, which allows you to sustain your breath longer and use your voice more efficiently. Projection to use your voice in such a way that it fills the performing space so that every member of the audience can hear and understand you. Improvise. To speak or to act without a script. Proscenium stage areas. The perspective is that of an actor facing the audience from such a stage. Stage right left. Looking right and left as you would face the audience. Upstage, way from the audience. Downstage, toward the audience. Center stage, the center of the acting area. Key light. Each lighting area should be lit by at least two lighting instruments at 90 degree angles toward each other. This is the brightest of the two. Often one of these two instruments will have a warmer colored gel and one will have a cooler colored gel. Fill light. Each lighting area should be lit by at least two lighting instruments at 90 degree angles toward each other. This fills in shadows created by the key light. Often one of these two instruments will have a warmer colored gel and one will have a cooler colored gel. Lighting key. The angle and color for each lighting area can be shown in a simple diagram. Lighting plot. To help you keep track of the lighting configuration you have designed. Sound. Amplifies speech, provides special effects, and supplies music to enhance the mood and meaning of a play. Recorded sounds. Recorded music and sound effects available on records, tapes, and CDs. Created sounds. Music played live and sounds created by you. Found sounds. Sounds heard in locations such as zoos, construction sites, and playgrounds. Show tapes. Put all of your sounds onto one tape in order. If a sound is needed more than once, you record it separately for each cue. Sound design. Manipulate the sounds you produce by changing the tone, intensity, or balance of sound through the speakers. Costume design. Must work with actors and analyze the script first. Script analysis for costume designer. How to express the character's style and personality in the costume. Effective costume color on the mood of a scene. Research the era and create sketches and color renderings from which the costume crew can make or build individual costumes. Costume management. Keep detailed lists and forms. Even color coding which costume is for which actor's scene. Costume plot. To keep track of the costume items for each character you need this. Costume list. 
The costume plot will help you organize your thoughts and develop this which should list every character and all of his or her clothing and accessories. Paul Rent Barbara Build List To organize the sewing or acquisition of each costume, this list should identify the actor, character, and pieces required as well as size information. Copy the list five times. Costume Measurement Cards have each actor fill this out. You need to know the measurements and standard clothing size of an actor. Update is necessary. Costume production calendar. Count backward from opening night to identify final dates when costumes must be ready for performance and rehearsals. Dates for fittings in which actors try on costumes to assess necessary adjustments. And dates for sewing, shopping, measuring and design approval. Makeup determines the way in which the audience perceives characters. Script analysis for the makeup designer. First do a script analysis. The makeup designer must research the characters or types presented in the production. Character makeup sketch. Begin by creating a character sketch unrelated to the actor. This allows you, the director, and the designer to clarify your thoughts and plan the look of the character. Makeup plan. Record your decisions about makeup on this. Try it out on the actor before opening night and make any necessary modification. Refer to the plan while applying the makeup for the performance. Speaker. The person who is presenting an oral message to a listener. Message. Whatever a speaker communicates to someone else. Channel. The means by which a message is communicated. Listener, the person who receives the speaker's message. Frame of reference. The sum of a person's knowledge, experience, goals, values, and attitudes. No two people can have exactly the same frame of reference. Feedback, the messages, usually nonverbal, sent from a listener to a speaker. Interference. Anything that impedes the communication of a message, interference can be external or internal to listeners. Situation, the time and place in which speech communication occurs. Ethnocentrism, the belief that one's own group or culture is superior to all other groups or cultures. Message communication. Besides the message you send with words, you send a message with your tone of voice, appearance, gestures, facial expression, and eye contact. Impacting the frame of reference. You can easily test the impact of different frames of reference. Because people have different frames of reference, a public speaker must take great care to adapt the message to the particular audience being addressed. You must be audience-centered. Acknowledging feedback. Do your listener lean forward in their seats like they're paying attention? Do they have quizzical looks on their faces? Do they shuffle their feet and gaze at the clock? Feedback is affected by one's frame of reference. External interference. Traffic. Clatter of a radiator. Students conversing in the hall. A room being too hot or cold, etc. Internal interference. Thoughts going on inside their head. Feeling ill. Worried about an upcoming test, etc. Situational awareness. You must be alert to the situation. Certain occasions require certain kinds of speeches and you need to be aware. Cultural diversity in speaking. Public speaking is a vital mode of communication in most cultures around the world. Cultural diversity and public speaking. The meanings attached to gestures, facial expressions and other nonverbal signals also vary from culture to culture. Avoiding ethnocentrism. Avoiding this does not mean that you must agree with the values and practices of all groups and cultures. You must show respect for the cultures of the people you address and adapt your message to the values and expectations of your listeners. Hearing. The vibration of sound waves on the eardrums and the firing of electrochemical impulses in the brain. Listening. Paying close attention to and making sense of what we hear. Appreciative listening, listening for pleasure or enjoyment. Empathic listening, listening to provide emotional support for a speaker. Comprehensive listening, listening to understand the message of a speaker. Critical listening, listening to evaluate a message for purposes of accepting or rejecting it. 
Spare brain time. The difference between the rate at which most people talk and the rate at which the brain can process language. Active listening. Giving undivided attention to a speaker in a genuine effort to understand the speaker's point of view. Keyword outline. An outline that briefly notes a speaker's main points and supporting evidence in rough outline form. Lincoln-Douglas debate. Debate taking place between two individuals who debate the moral and ethical value of a resolution, a statement that proposes a policy action. LD debate procedure. First affirmative constructive, six cross examination, three minutes first negative constructive, seven minutes cross examination, three minutes first affirmative rebuttal, four minutes first negative rebuttal, six minutes second affirmative rebuttal, three minutes teams consist of one person only. Cross examination debate. Four person form of debate that draws from traditions and rules in the legal and policy making fields. Two teams of two people teach debate the merits of a proposed policy. CX debate affirmative. Suggests a specific policy that falls within the bounds of that resolution and argues that the policy should be enacted because doing so would accrue a number of advantages. CX debate negative argues against a specific policy by articulating drawbacks and disadvantages that would result from enacting the affirmative's policy. It also refutes the affirmative's claimed advantages. LD debate negative. Proposes a value and criteria, but the negative argues that the value is best served by negating the given resolution. LD debate rebuttals. The two debaters attempt to refute the other's arguments and show that the or she best upheld his or her value. CX Debate Procedure Original Oratory Speech that may be on any subject the student chooses must be written and memorized by the student cannot contain any more than 150 words quoted directly. Standard Oratory Limited to 9 and 10 grade A speech, editorial, or essay written by a person other than the speaker and must be memorized plays and fictional monologues are unacceptable must include an intro acquainting the audience with the piece not to exceed 10 minutes. Prose Poetry Monologue Humorous and dramatic interpretation Extemporaneous speaking Humorous and dramatic duet. Duet teams must qualify together if and shall consist of a cutting from a single work of published, worthwhile literature containing two or more characters using the same diction the author has used in the original manuscript. Maximum time includes 10 minutes. This is a memorized event. Public forum debate. Which of the following best describes the main purpose of the parliamentary procedures adopted to govern legislative debate in student congresses? To guarantee majority rule while respecting the rights of speakers representing the minority. Feedback in the process model of interpersonal communication. Nonverbal feedback. Verbal feedback. A receiver needs to be able to ask pertinent questions if they do not understand a particular aspect of the delivered message. In education, this is known as a Socratic method. A receiver's most important function is to continually indicate their level of understanding of the delivered message. Rhetorical Criticism the critical analysis of rhetoric or spoken words. Rhetoric often refers specifically to important messages delivered to a large group of people, as for instance in a political speech. Criticism to advance a cause. Self-disclosure. Four basic channels of public communication. 1. Speech delivery is considered a simple transmission of words by one person to a group. 2. Speaker's tone of voice indicates their attitude through the oral channel. 3. Visual aids transmit information through the pictorial channel. 4. Gestures and facial expressions. Informative speech. Primary goal is to instruct the audience on a particular subject. The humor or color of the speech should not distract from the overall intention, which is to disseminate information. Often contains statistical data and an organized set of arguments and supporting evidence. Impromptu speech. One delivered with a minimum amount of preparation and in an informal style. 
extemporaneous speech combines elements of preparation and improvisation. This type is more conversational and informal than a written speech and is therefore more appropriate for casual gatherings. Eulogy A speech that praises a particular individual and highlights their best qualities. Often given at funerals as a speaker remembers the deceased in a positive light. Introductory speech the best type do not simply list the achievements or characteristics of the person or event that is to follow. Rather, they engage the interest of the audience and whet their appetite for what is to come. Welcoming speech Often given at the beginning of a convention, meeting, or special event of some kind, typically light on substance and primarily provide an overview of the events to follow. Entertaining speech the only goal is to entertain and amuse the audience. Many speeches that also contain information or persuasive content are primarily entertaining. Persuasion The precise goals are dependent on the particular cause promoted by the speaker. Can be an argument or as more indirect, even subversive, suggestion. Basic elements of a speech Structure is the order and a speech must have a logical and coherent structure. 2. Content The information in the speech. 3. Presentation The style in which it is delivered to the audience. Body language in public speaking As much as words or gestures, a speaker's posture transmits information about their attitude, credibility, and confidence. A speaker should stand up as straight and tall as possible. Nonverbal communication and establishing the credibility. Improving voice and articulation problems. A person can record themselves and listen to the way they speak. Practice in producing the correct sound every day should result in almost immediate progress. Effects of cultural background on connotative meaning. The best way to acquire such a sense of connotative meaning is to spend time with the members of the community. Eye contact. An effective speaker will often shift his or her gaze around the room, making eye contact with as many zero people as possible. Under no circumstances should a speaker look up in the air, stare at their notes, or fix their eyes on some point in the distance. Movements should be calm, regular, and smooth. Gestures A public speaker should make sure that their gestures are in harmony with the subject matter of the speech and the expectation of the audience. Using notes during a speech you should rely on notes as little as possible. Speakers who become reliant on notes may not be able to orient themselves in a speech if something goes wrong with the notes. State apprehension as a component of speech anxiety. The fear of embarrassment or public disclosure can be overcome only with significant practice at public speaking. State apprehension is speech anxiety that is only felt in specific situation. Symptoms could include vocal tic, sweaty palms, and a trembling voice. Trait apprehension as part of speech anxiety. Those aspects of speech anxiety that are unique to an individual. Overcoming trait apprehension can be done with experience. Interpretation of speech anxiety. This anxiety is good because it focuses the attention and encourages concentration. It is a natural response to confronting an uncertain and unfamiliar situation. Denotative meaning. Dictionary meaning. The way in which a word indicates something else. A speaker must always be conscious of the denotative meanings of the words they use. Connotative meaning. Any implication or a suggestion connected to a word that extends beyond the denotative meaning of the word. These meanings are often quite emotional in character. Expository supporting material. Information that sheds light on areas about which the audience may know little. Common forms include examples, analogies, and narratives. It is distinguished from argumentative material in that it strives to remain as objective as possible. Sources must be verified. Hypothetical examples in speeches Analogies in a speech Simply an extended comparison between two things. The speaker should take care to indicate this and should not make claims that suggest the analogy is perfect. An effective analogy can be useful in predicting and can give the audience a way of engaging with the subject. Narratives in a speech a narrative is simply a story. They can be fiction or non-fiction. Narratives tend to have more impact on an audience when they are true. 
Statistics in speeches. Stats are any information that contains numbers. To be effective, stats must be clear and accurate. Audience members should always be wary of stats and should press the speaker to provide more information on the origin and methodology behind any stats used. Numbers in a speech. Numbers is markers of evaluation. Numbers can be used as a basis for comparison. They can be used to make illustrative points. It is important to emphasize that although members suggest an impartiality, they are calculated by human beings who are highly subjective. Eyewitness testimony in a speech. Expert testimony in speeches. Any time a speaker can quote a well-known authority who agrees with their point of view, they will be eager to do so. Testimony is only expert and appropriate when it comes from an expert in that particular field.